Hi, my name is Richard Duffy. I'm the General Manager for Asia Pacific at Enterprise and I'm also the Product Evangelist. And what I'd like to do in today's video is I'm gonna take you through and show you how quickly and easily you can get set up with Enterprise and link it in to your SAP Business One implementation. Now I'm gonna look at this in the context of a trial. But the process that I'm gonna take you through right now is exactly the same process that you would go through should you decide to become uh, an enterprise customer and deploy enterprise with your existing SAP Business One solution. So the first thing you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna to need to go and visit the enterprise website and you can find that at www.enterprise.com. That'll bring you to this page and then you'll notice up the top here is where you log into the enterprise service. So you go up here and you choose login. Now if you haven't already registered for access for enterprise yet, what you'll need to do is you'll need to go in and register. And you'll see on this screen, you'll be given two choices. Number one is you can log in, and the second choice is you can register. So I'm going to, I'm not gonna go and log in um, using my existing account, but I'm gonna set up a new account, okay? So in order to do that, I simply go here and I choose register. And then I go and I put in my email address. So I'm going to use rduffyhome at gmail.com. All right. I'm going to create a password that I want to use. And then you simply need to put in your organizational domain. All right. So this will traditionally be the, the domain that, that you have that's attached to your company. All right, so in this instance, gmail.com isn't a great one. I actually have a number of different uh, domains that I use. So in this case, I'm gonna use smbsandbox.com.au. All right, now you don't have a partner ID at this particular point in time. So if you don't know the ID, as you can see, it says here, if you don't know what that is, leave it blank. And then you go and you choose register. So what's now happening? Automatically in the back-end enterprise server, we are provisioning uh, a new solution for you. So then you'll just need to go and log in to your mail account and then you'll have an email which will have come through to you and you'll have an option there that you'll click to activate that account. So let's go and do that. So here we go. Here is our email that's come through my enterprise account activation. And it's saying, as you can see, please click on the image below to activate your enterprise account. So I'm gonna click on that. It's gonna activate my account. It's gonna bring me back to enterprise. And it's telling me my account is now active. That's basically it. So now I've done that, I'm able to now go and log in. So I just click on the login button now. And that brings me into my enterprise 360 degree view. Now, the very next step is to go ahead and configure your SAP Business One solution. All right, in order to do that, we go here into setup, and then we go to integration, and we download the enterprise data service. So I'll click there and choose download EDS, and you'll see it's downloading that file for me and I'll hit save. And then I'm going to go to the machine that is running on the same network as my SAP Business One SQL or HANA server. That machine has to have the DI API loaded. The 32-bit DI API needs to be loaded. And what it will then do um, is you will run that run that application and it will configure the enterprise data service. Now, one other thing that I'm gonna show you uh, when we're here on your enterprise solution is you will go in here into your users. Now, if you wanna start inviting other people to use your enterprise deployment, all you'll do is you'll go in here and you'll put in their email. So you type in their email address and then you hit invite. They will then get an email which will give them the opportunity to accept that invitation and then they will appear in your list of available users. All right, 
Now, one of the things that you have to do is you have to grant your users access to each of the different mobile applications as well as the web app. Because you'll notice right now for myself, R. Duffy, um, all I'm seeing right now is the 360 degree view map and setup. So in order for me to access all of the apps, I simply go here and I click on edit and you'll see each one of the mobile apps are available for me. So I'm just going to select each one of those because I want to use all of the mobile apps and then I'm going to hit save and so what that has now done is that has granted me access to all those apps but now you'll notice I still don't have access to all of the functionality in the web application for those of you who have seen my previous demonstration um, showing you how uh, enterprise works you'll know that there's multiple options that also appear here inside the web app and they're the same as we're delivering out here through the mobile apps so to grant access to that you just simply click on your name and then you'll see that what you get uh, is this additional screen where it brings up your details and then you can come in here and click on permissions and then you can see all right here we have um, all of the web apps so I go in here and I'll select each one of those and I also do want to be able to take payments so I now say apply tells me that my user has been updated successfully and then all I need to do is log back into the system I remember I just went up here and I clicked on here which logs me out of the system and now you'll see I have access to all these additional functional areas in the web app now I don't actually have any transactions in the system yet all right so if I go back to my 360 degree view you'll see if I look at all transactions there's nothing there why is that well I haven't yet installed my SAP Business One components or my uh, my enterprise data service I haven't yet installed that on SAP Business One so let's go through and let's do that so I'm now connected to my SAP Business One server and in this particular instance what I'm going to do is I'm going to install the enterprise data service I'm going to put that onto the same machine that's running my SQL server so how do I do that well I've already downloaded it and it's sitting here in my downloads folder so I go here and I right click on the enterprise data service setup and I run as administrator I then say yes it asks me a couple of basic questions where do you want this installed so I'll just accept the defaults and then it says what port number and what service ID suffix do you want now why is this important um, you might have three different SAP business one databases that you want to connect to each one of those SAP Business One databases will be on a different service configuration. All right, so I've only got it, got one at the moment, so I'll just put 8099, and I'm going to use my Australian database, so I'll just give it a service ID suffix of AU. But if you had three, you would need to do this three times, and you'd put each one on a different port. So 8099, 8098, and 8097, for example. But this port, this is the port that you need to open up on your firewall and make sure the traffic can move between the enterprise server and the enterprise data service on this machine not going to go through the the intricacies of setting up network address translations or anything like that but suffice it to say if you need help with that I'm available to, uh, to to help you do that so you put that information in and then you'll say next and it's just saying this is basically what's happening enterprise data service AU installed on port 8099 so that's your service suffix and then I'll say next and then I'll tell it to go ahead and do the installation it's now doing that installation now important point to note you'll see it's automatically read the location of the DI API so you need to make a note of that because it's going to ask you for that in a second um, when we go back into the enterprise server so you just need to remember what that is uh, and then you also need to put in uh, administrator email address that you created when we first set up your enterprise um, server all right that's the the gmail account that i used so i'll put in our duffy home at gmail.com and then i'm going to say save and close now all this information is going to be populated 
in a minute when we go back into the enterprise service. So I'm going to say save and close. That's now done. It's basically saying that the 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 service is now configured and that's now exiting out and we now say finish. Now what you'll now find is if you go into um, into your Windows start menu you'll see you've got this configure option there and this will allow you to go ahead and call this up and make any changes that you need to including if you get something wrong and you want to wipe the configuration um, you can do that. Alright so I'm just going to go in here and say save and close so that's all fine and then we're going to move back to our enterprise system and finish the configuration. So here we are, we're back in our enterprise system and I'll go in here and I come up and I say I want to configure the integration. So now what the values are that I'm putting in here are the values that will appear in the enterprise data server. So my, SQL, my SAP server name is sbo sqlsmbsolutions.com.au my database server type, I know it's running on SQL 2012. Oh, and by the way, they're the databases that we support. SAP HANA, SQL Server 2012 or SQL Server 2014. My company database is SBO Demo AU because it's just a standard demo database that I've got that I'm pointing to. My license server, so now again remember, this is important because this is um, what we had set uh, it came up at the bottom of that um, of that other screen all right inside the the enterprise data service configuration my SAP username that I'm going to use is ERP I'll put in the password for that I'm going to use my SA database user usually not a good idea to use your SA but this is just a demo so it doesn't matter uh, and then I'm going to put in my database password as well and then I sit, hit save configuration what it's doing now it's validating that configuration and it's writing it back to the uh, enterprise data service on your SAP Business One server so it's saying my configurations changed so now if I go back and I look in here at my backend SAP Business One server I go and run that configure option you'll now see there it is all that information has been written back in here for me so we know it's working fine now if you want to check your installation diagnostics you can click here on installation diagnostics and you can run a series of tests all right and this will go ahead and it will just validate and make sure everything's running um, running correctly it'll check your DI API connectivity and so on and so forth and then if you run into any issues it's going to come in it's going to tell you um, what's happening there as well that error message I got that's not really an issue for me at the moment that's not going to stop anything from working alright so that's it I'll hit save and close because I know everything's working fine let's go back to our enterprise system so now I can go in here and I can say show my test panel I can put in one of the table names inside SAP Business One and I can run a query and what it's doing now is it is talking between the enterprise server and your enterprise data service and making sure it can read the data so you put in any SAP table name the customer OCRD table is always a good one uh, and you see it's, be, it's now able to read that so you know that your communication between your SAP Business One system and the enterprise server is all correct so that's fundamentally it now there are a couple of other things that um, you will potentially need to do but uh, depending on your implementation of SAP Business One and how you want to configure your enterprise but fundamentally that's it you should now have a working system inside your uh, enterprise server and you should now be able to go in and you can run your data import so you need to run your data import at least once and what this will do is this will populate for the very first time all of the data inside the enterprise server okay so I'm going to put in a date um, of the first of the first 2010 because my sample data is a little bit old 
Now, the thing to bear in mind with enterprise is this is not a historical data system. It's a transactional data system. So, you know, you don't want to go back five or six or seven years because that's not what enterprise is about. It's actually about being able to transact in the here and now. So oftentimes we find most people will only go back one year or maybe two years, but you can put um, whatever you want there. And I'm going to apply that date. Actually, sorry, I have to go and select all of these objects first that I want to that I want to have imported in. Again, I simply go through here and select each one. Now, some of these tables might not have any data in it, but the system's going to tell you if that's the case. All right. So I'll just finish selecting all of those. I'll apply that date. That date's now set. OK. And then I simply hit the import button. It's just warning you that, hey, when you do a full import, it may overwrite your existing data, but that's usually not an issue. And I'll say OK. Then you'll get a message coming back and telling me, you know what, your data import is now running, your import started, um, and then you'll get a notification once that's finished completely. So I'll say OK. Now, if you feel so inclined, you can sit here and watch to see what happens. All right. Uh, and you can see that's the scenario there. My import's been successful. It'll show me the number of documents that have come in. I've got no service calls or activities or sales opportunities in my current SAP Business One database. So that's why you're seeing that. But effectively, that's now done. So my system's now ready to rock and roll. So if I go back here now to my 360 degree view, and I look at all transactions, you can now see you have a system that's now populated with all the, all the data in your existing SAP Business One deployment. So that's it. Easy, quick, relatively straightforward. You now have a working enterprise solution.